When do women really start to miss you? Psychological insights high-value men overlook. Have you ever wondered when a woman truly starts to miss you? It's not when you're constantly giving her attention, bombarding her with texts, or trying hard to impress her. Surprisingly, the key lies in doing the opposite. What you're about to learn will flip everything you think you know about attraction on its head. There's a psychological trigger that most men miss, but 95% of high-value men understand, even though they often fail to use it effectively. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly when and why she starts missing you. The power of absence. Why distance fuels desire. Let's dive into one of the most powerful yet overlooked principles in relationships. The scarcity principle. This psychological concept explains why we place more value on things that are harder to get. And it's not just about material things, it also holds true in romantic relationships. Think about it. What do you value more something that's always there or something that's rare and difficult to obtain? Scarcity creates value, and this principle is key when it comes to attraction. Absence is essential for desire. Here's the takeaway. If you're always available, she won't have the chance to miss you. Why? Because there's no mystery, no space for her to feel your absence. Constant availability might seem like a sign of interest, but it actually works against you. The human brain craves contrast. Just like you appreciate the sun more after a few rainy days, or value your free time after a demanding work week, absence makes the heart grow fonder. When something becomes scarce, its value rises. The less available you are, the more she starts to appreciate your presence. The truth is, emotional distance is essential for sparking attraction. By giving her space, you allow her to reflect on your time together. She won't miss you because of something you said or did, but because absence makes her feel your presence more deeply. Her mind naturally gravitates towards the positive memories, softening any negatives. This is the power of memory at work magnifying the good moments when they're not constantly available, making you more desirable in her eyes. Why high-value men overlook this principle? Now, why do so many men, even high-value ones, miss this? It stems from a misunderstanding of what women actually want in relationships. Many men think that constant availability, always texting, always saying yes will keep her interested. They believe that being around more means she'll like them more. But here's the catch. Constant availability leads to predictability, and predictability leads to boredom. When there's no mystery or excitement, attraction fades. Even the most successful men often fall into the trap of relying on status, wealth, or looks, assuming that's enough. Yet without space for her to miss you, those traits become background noise. It's like eating your favorite food every day. No matter how much you love it, you'd get tired of it eventually. The novelty wears off, and you start craving something different. Relationships work the same way when you're always there. She begins to take you for granted. Key takeaway. Creating space without pushing her away. So how can you use this principle of creating space without coming across as distant or uninterested? The key is finding the balance between availability and absence. You don't want to play mind games, but you also don't want to smother her. Start by being mindful of how much time and attention you're giving her. If you're always the one initiating conversations or plans, take a step back and allow her to reach out to you. But here's the crucial part, don't do this with the intention to manipulate. Instead, focus on your own life, goals, and growth. When you're genuinely busy pursuing your passions, whether it's building a career, hitting the gym, or learning something new, you'll naturally create the right amount of space. 
This space is where attraction grows. It gives her time to think about you, wonder what you're up to, and miss your presence. And when you come back together, your time and attention will feel more valuable to her. That's when the real attraction starts to deepen, the push-pull dynamic, mastering emotional tension. Now, let's explore another key principle of attraction, the push-pull dynamic. This is a powerful tool that creates and maintains emotional tension between two people. It's not about playing games, it's about understanding the natural flow of attraction. The push-pull dynamic is simple. The push is when you're giving her attention, engaging with her, making her feel special. The pull is when you step back, give her space, and let her come to you. This creates an emotional ebb and flow like a roller coaster, something people are naturally drawn to, just like the ups and downs of dramatic TV shows or reality series. How the push-pull dynamic works in relationships. This dynamic works because it introduces a sense of uncertainty. When you push, you show interest, and when you pull, you give her time to question how much you're invested. This isn't about manipulation or leading her on, it's about pacing the relationship so that you don't give everything away too quickly. That emotional tension keeps her engaged and wanting more. You're creating an emotional balance that keeps her engaged. Imagine you're texting a woman regularly and things are going well. She's showing interest and you're building a connection. But if you're always immediately available, constantly texting back, always pushing, you'll eventually remove any tension or sense of mystery. There's no pull, just push. She knows exactly where things stand. And while that might sound good, it kills excitement. Now, if you introduce a little pull, maybe not responding right away or being busy for a day, you create unpredictability. She starts wondering what you're doing and that curiosity engages her emotions. She begins to invest more because she's unsure of her place, which keeps her intrigued. Push-pull, essential for long-term attraction. The push-pull dynamic isn't just for the early stages of dating, it's key to sustaining attraction in long-term relationships. Even after months or years together, this dynamic helps keep things fresh and exciting. Many relationships fall into routines where both partners become predictable and comfortable. While stability is important, too much predictability can lead to complacency. By maintaining the push-pull dynamic, you keep the emotional connection alive. It adds a layer of mystery and excitement that prevents the relationship from growing stale. Attraction isn't about constant availability, it's about balance. If you're always there, there's no space for her to miss you. If you're too distant, she may lose interest. The push-pull dynamic helps you find that sweet spot where she's consistently engaged and emotionally invested. Self-sufficiency. The core of attraction. Now let's explore the most attractive quality a man can have self-sufficiency. This goes beyond financial independence or a great job. It's about emotional independence, having a fulfilling life outside of your relationship and not relying on her for validation or happiness. This kind of confidence and self-reliance is magnetic and it lays the foundation for strong, lasting attraction. Women are naturally drawn to men who are self-sufficient. Why is that? Because a self-sufficient man isn't dependent on her for his emotional stability. He's not constantly looking for her approval or validation. Instead, he's confident, secure, and motivated by his own ambitions and goals. This independence creates an irresistible allure. What self-sufficiency looks like in real life. Self-sufficiency doesn't mean ignoring her or acting indifferent. It's about living a life so full and meaningful that you're not constantly seeking her validation or anyone else's. You have your own goals, interests, and passions, and it's those things that naturally make you attractive. For example, 
If you're focused on advancing your career or starting a business, you're fully invested in your personal growth. This shows her that your time is valuable and that you're not waiting around for her to fill your days. You have a sense of purpose and that purpose is what fuels you. Inclusion. When she starts missing you. In summary, the key to making a woman miss you lies in understanding and applying these core principles. Absence increases value, the push-pull dynamic sustains emotional tension, and self-sufficiency makes you naturally appealing. By embodying these ideas, you'll create a space where she begins to truly miss you. Remember, it's not about playing games or manipulating her emotions. It's about genuinely focusing on your own life, pursuing your own goals, and giving her the room to appreciate your presence. When you do that, she'll miss you more than ever. Chasing emotionally unavailable people. Have you ever found yourself drawn to someone who is distant, flaky, or just not ready for a relationship? Maybe you've gone on dates where you feel no spark, or worse, you feel an intense connection with someone who keeps you guessing picking you up, then putting you down. It's a roller coaster, and somehow you can't stop thinking about them. Sound familiar? If this resonates with you first, know that you're not alone. Many people are attracted to emotionally unavailable partners, and it can come from a couple of different places. The first reason is false scarcity, a kind of psychological trap. When someone makes themselves scarce or hard to get, we often misinterpret that as a sign of higher value. It's similar to how we think about diamonds versus air. Diamonds are rare and expensive, so we perceive them as incredibly valuable. Air, on the other hand, is everywhere, so we don't think about it even though without it, we'd last only a few minutes. In love, we sometimes chase people who act like diamonds rare and hard to obtain while overlooking someone who is much more like air. Always there for us, dependable and nurturing. We might ignore someone who genuinely cares about us, who calls when they say they will and shows up when we need them. The truth is, availability doesn't make someone less valuable, it just makes them reliable. The second reason we might chase emotionally unavailable people is when there's something deeper at play. If we keep finding ourselves attracted to the same type of person, one who causes us anxiety, leaves us feeling uncertain, or makes us constantly question where we stand, then it may point to an unresolved pattern within ourselves. This back and forth dynamic where you feel immense anxiety followed by brief moments of happiness when they return, creates a cycle of emotional highs and lows. It's draining, but it's also addictive. We might mistake those rare moments of affection as signs of love, when in reality, it's the inconsistency that's keeping us hooked. By recognizing these patterns and addressing why we're drawn to emotionally unavailable partners, we can start making healthier choices in love. When we keep finding ourselves attracted to emotionally unavailable people, it's often because there's something familiar in that pattern for us. Maybe we grew up in an environment where love felt unpredictable here one moment, gone the next. And when it returned, it felt incredible. The moments without it left us feeling unsafe, but when it came back, it was euphoric. This creates a cycle what some refer to as a trauma bond. It's that addictive pattern where you feel miserable, but then the person comes back and suddenly makes you feel amazing. So you endure the lows, waiting for the next high when they text or give you attention. Many of us confuse the anxiety that emotionally unavailable people trigger in us with love or passion. Whether this stems from our upbringing or something else, our nervous system becomes wired to seek out the same emotional roller coaster we've grown accustomed to. High highs and low lows become familiar. And when we encounter this pattern in new relationships, we latch onto it. We feel intense anxiety when they're distant 
and incredible joy when they finally reach out. But this isn't love. It's an addiction to the emotional extremes. The real challenge is recognizing that this love we think we're feeling might just be an addiction to the drama. And when we're caught in this cycle, we often overlook healthier relationships that could provide true happiness and peace. It's similar to someone addicted to drugs. If you take them to see a beautiful sunset on the day they quit, they might not be able to appreciate its beauty. The synthetic highs they're used to overshadow the natural wonder in front of them. In the same way, we struggle to appreciate the calm, stable love that's actually good for us because we're hooked on the chaotic highs and lows of toxic relationships. The key to breaking this pattern is recalibrating our nervous system. As Chris Bailey explains in his book, How to Calm Your Mind, we have to lower our baseline dopamine levels. In dating, the more we get caught up in the thrill of emotional chaos, the more our brain craves those highs. But once we reset, we'll be able to appreciate the kind of love that brings long-term happiness and peace, rather than the fleeting excitement of emotional volatility. We often find ourselves drawn to the intense highs, the passion, and the love bombing that some people give us. We crave the drama, believing that's what love is supposed to feel like. But when we detach from that mindset, we can start to lower our dopamine baseline and begin to appreciate a healthier, more balanced form of love. In just two days, I'll be diving into exactly how to do this at the Love Life Reset event. If you're watching this and realizing that you relate to this cycle of emotional addiction, it's time to take action. These patterns don't break on their own. They require conscious effort and a new approach. This event is designed to help you discover the kind of love that not only makes you happy, but also brings peace into your life. The journey of finding love is often filled with both exhilarating highs and crushing lows, especially when we find ourselves entangled in emotionally addictive patterns. At first, the intensity of the passion and excitement can feel like everything we've ever wanted, but soon we realize it comes with a price constant anxiety, uncertainty, and emotional turbulence. This cycle of highs and lows becomes not just a habit but an addiction, making it hard to break free. When we're trapped in this pattern, we often confuse the rush of emotion with love, but in reality it's just a temporary hit of dopamine keeping us hooked. Breaking this cycle starts with awareness. When we understand that these intense emotional fluctuations are more about feeding our dopamine addiction than experiencing genuine love, we can begin the process of detachment. This requires lowering our dopamine baseline, allowing us to experience a more stable, peaceful form of love that doesn't rely on emotional chaos. True love isn't about dramatic highs followed by crushing lows, it's about consistency, security, and mutual respect. Once we recognize this, we can begin to shift our focus toward healthier, more fulfilling relationships. However, change doesn't happen overnight. It takes conscious effort and a new approach to rewire the patterns that have governed our love lives. This is where intentionality becomes key. By acknowledging that our nervous system has been trained to seek out emotional roller coasters, we can actively work to break free from that habit. The first step is accepting that the kind of love that truly brings happiness may not come with the same intensity that we've grown used to. It may feel quieter, but it will be far more fulfilling in the long run. One of the most important lessons in this journey is learning to appreciate peace over passion. While passion may feel exciting in the moment, it often comes with instability and insecurity. Peace, on the other hand, brings a deeper sense of contentment and happiness that can only be found in relationships where both partners are emotionally available and secure. When we stop chasing the highs, 
We open ourselves up to this kind of loved one that doesn't leave us anxious or questioning our worth. This process also requires us to shift our focus inward. Instead of constantly seeking validation from others, we must cultivate a sense of self-worth and security from within. When we rely on external sources for our happiness, we become vulnerable to the whims of others. But when we build our sense of fulfillment from within, we become less dependent on external validation. And as a result, we attract healthier, more secure partners. Detaching from emotionally unavailable people doesn't mean abandoning hope for love. Instead, it means raising our standards for the kind of love we're willing to accept. When we stop settling for emotional crumbs, we make room for a relationship that truly nourishes us. This isn't about playing hard to get or using manipulative tactics. It's about recognizing our worth and demanding more from the relationships we engage in. In the end, the journey to finding love that brings both happiness and peace is a personal one. It's about more than just finding the right partner. It's about becoming the best version of ourselves. When we focus on our own growth, healing and emotional regulation, we naturally attract people who are on a similar path. This leads to relationships that are not only healthier, but also more sustainable in the long run. One of the most powerful tools we have in this journey is self-awareness. By understanding our patterns and the reasons behind them, we can take control of our love lives in ways we never thought possible. Whether we've been chasing unavailable people or stuck in a cycle of emotional addiction, it's never too late to make a change. With the right tools and mindset, we can break free from these destructive patterns and move toward a future filled with healthier, more fulfilling relationships. As we move forward on this journey, let's remember that love isn't supposed to be a constant source of stress or anxiety. It's meant to be a source of comfort, security, and growth. When we align our actions with this understanding, we open ourselves up to the kind of love that not only makes us happy, but also brings peace to our lives. It's time to reset, reframe, and rediscover what love truly means. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more insights on relationships and attraction.